Spring is in the air at Littleton Coin Company, and we want to help you brighten your collection. Visit us at littletoncoin.com all month long to enjoy 15% off your purchase. With a wide selection of coins, paper money, supplies, and more, Littleton Coin Company has something for every collector's taste. Use promo code SPRING at littletoncoin.com for 15% off your purchase all month long. Restrictions apply. Littleton Coin Company. Serving collectors since 1945. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. This is a podcast from Minute Media. Hashtag no music, no intro. Another episode of Hashtag Saints Twitter podcast coming at you. We're we're in the home stretch. <laughs> like in two weeks from today, I will be I will be in Vegas. We will, we will both be in Vegas. All four of us. Me, you, free, Jay will all be in Vegas and getting ready for the NFL draft. It's finally upon us. I feel like it's fucking taken. It always feels like it's taken forever. And I mean, at this point, everything's been everything's been done. Like teams, yeah, teams are in their in their bunkers, they're in their their, their meeting rooms, they're finalizing their draft board. Uh, you know, they may still meet with a couple of players and at the private, you know, the out of the 30 players they can fly in and meet with them privately. But for the most part, everything's done. We do have a big, big pro day coming up on Friday for Drake London. And oh. I think in terms of the if the Saints want this draft to go the way that's best for them. I think for Drake London, he needs to have a big pro day so that he gets drafted early and continues to maybe push quarterbacks and other receivers that they're probably maybe a little higher on. Um, But everything's – the hay is in the barn. We're just waiting to see what the picks are going to be. But something I was was thinking about watching this Pelicans game um, against the Spurs, this play-in game, watch – first three quarters and then recording the podcast and watching them like just seeing the smoothie king center or the blender just just frantic the energy the the excitement i was like man like and don't get me wrong right like go back to that that halloween game against the bucks tom brady like the superdome still can obviously have that same type of energy but something about this Pels team is the rookies on this Pels team has really yeah. propelled them to another to another level. Um, they got Her, Herb Jones, an excellent second round pick, like almost already an All NBA defender, excellent defender, um, does everything, and it just got me thinking like this draft for the saints like it is so (laughs) it is so extremely crucial for them to hit on like they they basically this is what they've done they are trusting that their scouting and jeff ireland is so good at their job that they're saying we can draft a player at 16 and 19 that are rookies that are going to contribute to our team and are going to be immediately, they're going to be good. And because of this, we're going to have them for four to five years on a cheap contract to control them and help get our cap situation in check. And they just, they have to get these picks right. I know in, Theoretically, you can say that about most drafts, but for the Saints, this is the draft because they've already punted to a degree on next year's first round pick. They're not going to uh-huh. another. 
They're not going to have a first round pick in 2023. So they're saying that the players that they have in their cloud right now is so lumped in together that they are going to feel comfortable who they pick. And it's exciting. And I see the vision a little clearer now, but it is petrifying if they don't get these picks right, bro. (laughs) And the most petrifying part is you just don't know. Like, we can hate the picks when they happen, but you don't know until the players get on the field, man. And not even then. Like, you got to let time it pass. Can, it could be another Pete Warner situation, bro. I remember yeah. me and you watch Pete Warner tape man. from Ohio State. <laughs> and I, we just, up, I said he wasn't going to make the roster. That's we, just, we just didn't see it, and we were completely wrong, right? And, and, and that happens when you have human scouting heat. Like sometimes you sometimes you hit you hit on it and sometimes you don't. Um, but even it could be the opposite way, right? Like they yeah. can draft players that we love, right? And, and I, it'd be garbage. It's garbage. Like the probability of them drafting, like if we say they they left the first round with Kenny Pickett and James Jamison Williams, bro, we'd be on cloud nine. Cloud nine. No. But what if Jamison Williams' leg ain't never right? Uh, he hang at strip clubs every night. <laughs> Wait, you putting that on that man? Bro, I'm just throwing, just throwing something out there, Alabama. You know what I'm saying? You know, he finally free in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? And Kenny Pickett is Blaine Gabbard. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it could happen. Like, I'm it can. Saying, like, it can, man. It can absolutely you know? can. So, like, that's what I try to tell people. Like, yeah, we, we talk our shit. We, like, we love our players. We, you know, we bang on the table with certain players. But, man, the, the whole thing I love about, like, just being a little draft nick and, t- you know, sideline scouting is we're not that much different from the scouts and the, and the GMs and all that shit. I know people like to say, oh, well, they're professionals. They've been in the league for hundreds of, you know, decades and this and that. But still, once you break it down, the only difference is they have access to more information. That's it. But they also have more internal bias. Oh, you know, talk because, about it. because they, you know, they've been burnt by, you know, looking at these players before. Or they, they all have biases, man. You know, and they have not only that, they have the jobs on the line. So, you know, that gives them even more implicit bias that, you know, that it's hard for them to hide. Like, whereas us, we just on the sideline, we ain't gonna lose our job because we're not getting paid to do this shit. So we literally just looking at players and giving our opinion. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So that's why I just kind of love the whole process because you just you you're talking about humans trying to figure out humans, man. And you take all the information you can in and make the best decision. But we know you can look at every draft, you know, people have broken down like, you know, 50 percent of these dudes, man, they won't even be in the league in a couple of years, you know. So it's it's just oof, it, it is a it is a very hit miss. It's. You know, like you said, man, it's frightening because they are, you know, walking a thin line by doing this because they could fuck around and have a, you know, a 2020 draft. Oh, oh boy. Where, where nobody contributed. I mean, you remember what they were saying? That draft, like, oh, we just got so many good players on the team. We just, we just drafting, you know, we're not even drafting for need, man, because we're not even sure we got enough spaces to fill a roster. Like, oh, bro, just, just talk for shit, how, huh? how cocky they were, bro? This is a cocky ass team, bro. That's so paid, though. That's so yeah, paid, it was for, for sure. <laughs> um, it's funny though because we talked about. I remember the general consensus we had after that draft, and we did a couple of like post draft episodes, and we were just like, "Ugh!" <laughs> like that was our general feel about that draft. Like we weren't feeling it. Like we were like, "Okay, well, if he is like." Okay, but like we neither of us were fans of Zach Bond hugely. We saw maybe some glimpses of Adam Troutman, and then we had like fucking Tommy Stevens, and it was, that was it, bro. That, that was, was it. 20, that was it. That was 20. Um, I do wonder, and this is something that we're not gonna know, but being that Sean Payton is gone and his alpha and very big ego, which that, that I'm not. I don't want that to come off as a negative. Like I think to be a head coach in any 
oh, at, yeah. at that level, like you got to have fucking balls and you got to have some ego with you. But I wonder now that that do- dominant personality is no longer in the room, what that means for the draft room, good or bad. So to, to some who rises point, up, who rises like, up, you know, so you to, put, to, you put 10 men in a room, somebody's going to rise up. You know what I'm saying? Is, like, is it Jeff Ireland? Like, is he the dude calling the shots? I think you had tweeted out some some good points earlier this week. You you know, in terms of perfect example, running back. Sean always had an eye for running back. Like, it didn't didn't matter the round. It, you know, he got Alvin, Boston Scott. You know, Pierre Thomas was obviously an undrafted free agent. But Sean always kind of just had that eye just for running backs for whatever wherever it was, right? And like you tweeted, it's like. Like who who has that eye on team for running back now? Because you know, right now it's just AK Mark Ingram and Tony Jones Jr. Bro, no? bro, it's nasty. It's like one of the like kind of most underrated holes in a, on the team right now. Even like even like Kamara, we expect him to miss some games. Even if not compared Kamara not missing some games, like we've known the best Kamara is Kamara that's splitting reps, right? You know what I mean? Like that's that's when you get the best of them. So, I mean, you're going to split rest with Mark. I mean, I love Mark Ingram, but it's like, come on now. Like, we know he's at the end of his career. You know what I'm saying? Tony Jones, I don't want to see him no more. Like, I don't want to see Tony Jones Jr. no more. I'm good. Like, he should be, like, the fourth running back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> off, off and on the practice squad, you know, if you have <laughs> if decimated by injuries, like, okay, you bring on Tony Jones Jr. But he shouldn't be, like, the guy next to AK. No, he, he shouldn't. And I think what the, the moves that the Saints have made in the offseason, besides they besides getting Andy Dalton back a quarterback, they brought in P J P Holtz. I don't know, man. Some some tight end from the Bears. I'm not <laughs> sure. Whatever. But besides those two players, and obviously bringing Jameis back, we were missed if I didn't mention that. There's really been no other upgrades on the offensive, offensive side no. of the ball. There hasn't. Yeah, no. all, the, all the, right now, all the resources have gone into defense, right? We got yep. Marcus May, Jalil Johnson. Um, that um, safety, that was in Tampa. Uh, Evans, they brought back P.J. Williams. All these things have been defensively. Now, at some point, I would like them to bring – Quan back at this like this point, just bring just bring him back. Like it makes hey, no Quan, sense. Why Quan ain't getting no messages, no missed calls. Nothing, <laughs> nothing bro. Nothing. Like, I, I did a search on Twitter just to like see, <laughs> and it was just like thanks people saying like, "Oh man, where's Quan?" So he ain't getting no hollers. So it's funny too because one of my favorite draft days of of yesteryear still a free agent is Anthony Barr. Um, wow. But That's yeah, crazy. Isn't that crazy. Yeah, he should come and just like him and Zach Ball and just do a Spider Man. Like, <laughs> uh, there's no chance in hell DA would know how to use Anthony Barr. Yeah, no, they have Anthony Ball special teams, man. <laughs> um, but I think those moves that they've made in free agency and moves they haven't made in free agency kind of indicates and shows you. I think what their plan is in the draft. I think their their plan defensively, you know, resign some guys, got to replace Marcus Williams, you know, bring some people back, bring some people on the, um, the interior of the defensive line. But I really think their plan going into this draft is to address offense and, and address it heavily. Now, how heavily yeah. is a different question. We heard from Tony this week. And if you ever – and I – the Tony – the, the show we record, recorded with Tony Pauline didn't do a lot of numbers. So if you didn't listen to that show, go back and listen to it because really? yeah, I mean, yeah. Going by like, yeah, it was like in the, like the mid seven hundreds, which is like, most come of us. on now, come on now. Saints Twitter. We got Tony Pauline. I know he's not like the biggest name. You're not doing him on ESPN or NFL network, but let me tell you, this dude is like, a grinder, you know what I'm saying? He's not sitting by his phone waiting for the info coming down. Like the dude goes out and get it. He gets the info. And the dude be accurate most of the times, man. Like 
Michael T. He was talking about Michael Thomas going to the Saints two months before that. It, it was crazy, bro. Like, I'll never. I mean, I remember used to reading his things and like Tony just knew, bro. <laughs> Tony just knew, and that's why Mike like, Thomas going to the Saints. Like you just telling me, he's going to the Saints. You if if we go to like we could take some information we have from Tony just by things he's tweeted or maybe whatever things he said on his shows and go to Vegas and make some money, bro. Like that's, that's, that's all right, Tony. Be most of the time. So well, here's the thing. It, well, the, quickly, here's the thing with Tony is since he's not like an Adam Schefter, you know, people like Lee, like everybody doing teams, you teams, agents, they all use Schefter and you know, rap sheet and all that. They use them to get information out. People like Tony, they're so kind of low key. They actually get the truth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like Tony, Tony might not talk to, you know, the GM, but he talks to like the assistant, to the assistant of the GM and, yep. and, and the scout and the lead scout and this and that. So he gets the, the info that's of people that's not really trying to spend too much that's just talking football. Right. Like, you know, you listen to somebody like, you know, Phil Yates or, Oh. You know, I don't know, Adam Schefter or, you know, Peter, anybody. Peter those Schrager. Guys, Peter Schrager. Those guys just get fed information on their text, you know, just to deliver it, just to get the spin going to, you know, put the team or the agent or the player in their best position, you know. Yeah. Well, well said. So if you didn't, if you're listening to this episode, if you didn't hear the episode we did with Tony Pauline, go, go back and listen to it because there's a lot of really good draft Saints Nuggets that's in that episode, but he's pretty much laid it out, right? The three positions that they want to potentially address with 16 and 19, quarterback, wide receiver, offensive tackle, maybe not in that specific order. And I really think that their offensive moves, off-season moves, excuse me, off off-season moves kind of really kind of shows you that's the case, right? Even the whole debacle with number 20, with uh, allegations 22s over there, that's the team telling you that as much as, you know, they brought Jameis back, but they were telling you that they wanted an upgrade over Jameis. We, I'm not talking about the, 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 the person. I'm just talking about the, the player and the talent. Their moves and their actions showed you that they wanted an upgrade over, over Jameis. They're screaming it like – that's why I don't what I don't get. I was talking to uh somebody, you know, somebody that coaches the Saints <laughs> this week about it. Like they just don't, like they don't get it either. Like, what the hell? Like, what are y'all watching? You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> the team, the, the the literally the Saints are telling you they look at J- Jameis Winston as a fine bridge quarterback. That's what they're telling you. That's what the money tells That's you. It. That's what the moves tells you. That's what they're telling you. I know a lot of people out there believe he's like a, you know, former number one overall pick that just needs the right weapons and the right time to become, you know, a franchise quarterback. But the teams don't believe that, not just the Saints, but nobody else, because he wouldn't have been sitting out there if he was, you know what I'm saying? For as long as he was, yeah. For as long as he was. So, and, I'm, and that's just not, that's not me saying like, oh, James, what's he going to suck? Like, he could very well have like a, really good, solid, or even a great season. You know, we've seen it in the league happen. You know, we can have a great season, and that would be, like, a great problem for the Saints. Like, that would be one of those good problems. But just looking at the trend of history, I mean, you can only go off what you saw. You know what I'm saying? And they know James. They had him in a room. They know what he's been able to learn and not learn and execute and not execute. So, I mean, they're just telling you, man. So, I mean, the, the James sites – I just got to chill, man. Got to chill. And then, and, and we are not Jameis haters. I'm not a Jameis hater. I've right. said on this pod plenty of times, like, I think we should bring Jameis back. Like that was like my number one option, you know, because that's like the best available options we have at the moment. But it's not like okay, people like man, Jameis, just bring Jameis. We, we good. We James. We got Jameis. Like we good. Like what are you talking about? <laughs> hey. Like what are you talking about, man? It's a it's a wild it's a wild thing to me that I don't even I don't even I think I've cleared out most of the people on Twitter that have come with me at that. Like I just blocked them so I don't get it as much anymore. But it's a very wild, wild little world they live in. Um, I do want to talk 
a little bit about something that you talk you talked about on Twitter. We've talked about in our text messages and just this this whole thing about quarterbacks and drafting quarterbacks and where the state of the NFL is right now and drafting quarterbacks because we have we have seen the pendulum swing like the fact that quarterbacks that like Mac Jones, Kenny Pickett, those type of prospects that, you know, they don't have high ceilings, man. Like they, they are who they are. Like if they show you who they are in college. They're pretty much going to be the similar or same type of player in the NFL. You hope that you hope they are right. If you're right, then you, you're making a good pick and how that's just kind of become a devalued type of player, even at the quarterback position. And I don't, and I think the I think the NFL is showing you it's, it's becoming devalued just in terms of where they get where quarterbacks like that get drafted now. But also, there's this sense that like fans think that it, unless you're Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, like this, I, I gave an, an analogy to a friend today. Like all these fans and teams want 12 inches, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they want. But sometimes, like, sometimes six and seven inches can get the job done, bro. Like, like yeah. you, you just say it. Like, you're not going to – like, the, the Josh Allens and Patrick Mahomes are – in credit to Josh Allen because his accuracy was fucking terrible yeah. as a he, prospect. He improved. He has greatly improved, and he has shown that he is – I think you could say that Josh Allen is a – I don't even know if I want to say Josh Allen is a generational talent, but he's – He's, he's played at that level. Quarterback, man. Yes. He's an elite quarterback. Those players don't grow on trees. And so if you it's have the 1%, a it's the 1%. Like, And it's like, if, if you're not this, if, 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 if I can't get that out of a quarterback in the NFL draft, I don't want it. He's not a first round pick. Get it out my face. And I'm like, where the fuck is this coming from? It's, it, it's, it's, I mean, you can't build a team like that. It's one, you need a quarterback. And there's so many things that go into it. Like, sure, you could you could sign a free agent quarterback, but free agent quarterbacks cost money. So now you got to compare to how much does a free agent quarterback cost to what you could get in a draft where you could get hopefully equal production or better that would be much cheaper for four to five years. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to weigh all that out. Um, Everybody would love to just draft a quarterback and then potentially be, like, a top three quarterback. Everybody's looking for that. Everybody's looking for that. But those dudes, like, man, it's just – it's hard, man. Like, look at the list of quarterbacks that come out over the last 10 years and select the elite of of that group. It's the 1%, bro. It's like a tiny, tiny faction. It's, it's, it's a sliver, man. It's, it's a sliver, sliver, man. And the rest, you got you got guys that are, like, pretty good. You know, you got guys that are, um, you know, solid. You got guys that are average, and you got guys that are below average. And, look, if it comes to getting to the Super Bowl, we've seen it. You know, we've seen great court. Look, Matthew Stafford, you know, all, He's always been a talented guy, but nobody ever looked at him as this top echelon quarterback with the, with the Lions for all those years, ever. You know, but he gets surrounded by the right talent, right coaching and all that stuff, and he plays well enough. Because even last year, like, he had some stinky games. He had a couple stinkers now. But he, yeah. he did enough. He did enough down the stretch to where, okay, he won the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? So... Even with these quarterbacks where you think, like, oh, you know, they'll never be a top three quarterback. Man, if they, like, top 12, top 13, and you can build your team around them, man, you got a chance, bro. Got, got a chance. Got a chance. And that's, sometimes that's all you need is just a chance. Like, and I, I know quarterbacks say of Kirk Cousins' ilk get a lot of flack. And I understand it. I get it. I really do. Keep in mind, Kirk Cousins right now, and I think that's going to the point, Kirk Cousins right now is getting paid. (laughs) Like, Kirk Cousins is a master bad getter. (laughs) Kirk has played the system well. But if you could get 
Kirk Cousins like play in production for five years on a rookie contract that allows you so much flexibility in terms of building your team in terms of free agency extensions, things like that. And we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Right. I'm pretty sure the world and the NFL didn't know there's going to be a global pandemic that was going to shut down the league. And there's going to be a flat uh, salary cap for basically about a year and a half, two seasons going, but with this new TV money that's set to kick in, and mm. things continue to trend up. Salary cap's going to get higher and higher and higher. We're already seeing what's happened with these quarterback contracts, these wide receiver contracts. Like it's going to get, it's going to get astronomical soon, bro. And I'm not, and this is not me saying that these the players don't don't deserve. It. Like these are billion, these are billion dollar fucking corporations. They should get every fucking fucking penny they can. Um, but we've talked about how hitting on a quarterback. In the draft, especially, you know, if it's in the first round, the Saints draft quarterback, they hit on that player, whether it be Malik Willis, whether it be Kenny Pickett, and that even and even you have the luxury of sitting that player for a year. Kenny Pickett is probably the most pro-ready quarterback to play right now, but you could potentially still sit him for a year. And you still have him for four seasons on a rookie contract that if he was drafted at 16th overall, bruh. You got Eric McCoy coming up. You got CD Deuce extension coming up. Maybe you can also afford to keep Marcus Davenport. Like it just unlocks so much that you yeah. can do. Exactly. <clears throat> Versus, you know, trading for a um damn a Garoppolo or you know, re-signing Jameis to you know 25 million a year. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, those things, those are the options you'll be handed. <laughs> you know, so that's why I'm like, I know people just, some people are just allergic to the idea of taking a quarterback. Like, a lot, some people don't want to trade up. I understand it. Like, I, I get it. I get the trade up scenario. For me, it's kind of like, well, what would it cost? Like, if you got to give up two, two, you know, your two first to move up, I wouldn't like that. But, you know, with this draft, you know, and uh, Peter King kind of talked about it. After talking like with Mickey Loomis, um, and I heard some other people talking about it, like it might not cost much to move up in this draft, just the way the mm-hmm. draft is set up. You know, I'm not talking about like moving up to the top five, but like if you're moving from like 16 to 11, you know, that might not that might not cost you much. I was you know, talking, so- I, I was talking with a friend, bro, today, and. As, as again, if you missed out on that Tony Polina episode, you missed out on those nuggets. But one of the prime teams that want to trade that wants to trade down this draft are the Vikings at 12, right? Yep. They have basically they have Derek Stingley and Trick McDuffie kind of as their corners that they're, that they're eyeing, right? Yep. And they potentially feel that they can move down and draft Trent McDuffie from Washington and get him lower. And I was, and just just spitballing, right? Let's say Malik or Kenny Pickett falls to 12 and the Saints, you know, want to move up to 12 to secure from 16 to 12 and still keep 19. They want to go from 16 to 12 and still to go up and secure their quarterback of the future and get in one of those quarterbacks. For a 16 to 12 would only probably cost you like a fourth round pick. Right. Like that is chump change, bro. Oh, you, even if it's the third round, it's like okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's right. not going to kill the team. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, th- but I don't even think in this draft it would cost a third round. I think it would nah. give me cost like a fourth round pick for going from like sixteen to twelve. Which is now, if you're Pittsburgh going from twenty to twelve, then you might, then you might be paying more. But I like it's. I think you perfectly said it's probably not going to cost a whole bunch to to trade up in this draft, like in, in other drafts past. And, you know, what I heard, you know, some people talking about it with the Saints is they're in a better position because they don't have that thirst for a quarterback breathing down their neck since they do have Jameis. They do have Jameis. They do have Andy Dalton. Whereas if they didn't – say they didn't bring back Jameis and, you know, say they signed – I don't know, uh, Marcus, Marcus Murray. Murray. Yeah, because then, then you're desperate. 
they get desperate. It's like, ooh, and they ooh. in a situation like last year, they were trying team, to move up. Teams for can quarter. Well, teams teams like, no. Girl. Yeah, they just like, no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'll give you this. Nope. And then you then you offering like, you know, two first, this, you know what I'm saying? Then you just offering too much and you're overpaying for a guy. Well, Saints, they're in a position now where they put themselves in a position to where Look, look, they got the ammo to move up a little bit if they want to, but if not, sit back. You got two picks in the first round in the top 20. You, I mean, according to Peter King, Mickey Loomis told him they have like two or three guys that they love that they're pretty sure is going to be there. So You know what I'm saying? So, like, so okay. I, I, I want to stick with that, right? So obviously you don't, they don't make, you don't make a trade like they did unless there's like they just feel they're very comfortable in this cloud right when you say that when when you hear that oh it scares me well that yes because that's also assuming that the players that they the two players that they have have all it takes is two teams just taking them a little earlier bro <laughs> they'd be like oh it's, it's that it's that that scares me and it's also they just we know they, they draft these players sometimes that we not even you know that people like having a second round or whatever. So it's it's just scares me that they have like two guys that's just like not even in the window that they just have rated more than anybody else. You know, and it scares me because it's just one of those things. You're like, who? Like <laughs> this again? <laughs> Pete Turner? You know what I'm saying? Like something like that again. You so know what's funny? What you know what's funny about Pete Turner is that I was looking at. Uh, Trayvon Walker's uh, mock mock draftable today. Which oh, is, oh yeah, which, which yeah. is crazy. The player he compares the most to mock draftable wise is fucking Peyton Turner. <laughs> isn't that is that fucking hilarious? That is hilarious, man. <laughs> and Trayvon Walker going top three in this draft, bro. Like it's gonna happen. Three, bro. Um, what are, when when you hear Mickey Loomis say that to Peter King? What are the who are the two players? that you think they are referencing? I think it's Penning. I think it's Kyle Hamilton. It, it could be, it's it's a safety. It could be Kyle Hamilton, Hamilton or the Michigan kid. Uh, Daxon Hill? Yeah, Daxon Hill. And I think it's, um, I think it's one of the wide receivers. I can't, I think it's, Part of me feels like it's 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 it's, 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 it's a lot of James Williams, Williams smoke, man. Around the Saints, bro. Like, I don't I don't want to believe it. It's like a part of me just I look at him like I don't want to do that. There's no way they're gonna do that. <laughs> we we waited too long, bro. We've been so <laughs> But there's a lot of smoke around that name, Tons. Saints, bro. Tons. Um, when I when I heard it. The, the two players I thought of the most was I think that they and I and I said this after the trade app and I think that they have a, a like a three wide receivers that mm-hmm. they will be extremely happy with at 19 or 16 right like I, I, I think I think I think two of them is Jamison Williams and Chris Olave yeah I think I think two of them are crystal like, and I'm I can't say I'm 100 percent certain of that, but I just get the feeling that okay, so let's say Jamison Williams gets drafted a little early, um, the highest he you know he's probably maybe going to go is ten, but if he doesn't go ten, I I really think the only competition the Saints have in drafting him is if the Eagles want to dip their toe in the wide receiver thing again or the Chargers, you know. That would be that would be I would hate that, bro. Like Herbert uh, with Keen Allen, uh, uh, Mike Williams, and a healthy Jameson Williams, bro. Uh, Fuck. Uh, <laughs> um, but I could see I could I could see them doing it because like now they have like at some point Keen Allen's gonna want to get paid. They I don't know, man. It's just it's it, that's a that's a best value type of pick. You know that the Chargers can make. Also, bro, I can see the Chargers doing something like they had a terrible fucking run defense, and I can't stand him. But one thing Jordan Davis does do well is like yeah. he is a like a run stopping, like defensive tackle. Like that is one thing he does extremely well. Now, is that worth a pick at 
wherever the Chargers are picking, I don't know. But nah, if you, I, if, I don't think they coach values it. Yeah, it wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would be shocked. But I do think that the Saints have two to three wide receivers that they have in their cloud, and then, like you said, I do get the feeling that they think that a player that it may be expected to go higher falls in the draft and is going to fall in their lap. But it also brings the question of, you know, they're, you know, they've been tied to quarterback quite a bit. They, if they don't need, need one, but they kind of really need, need one. Would you be surprised? So let's say draft day comes and we're, we're live streaming. Malik Willis is on the board. At 16, Kenny Pickett's on the board at 16. And Roger Goodell does not call their name. Would you be would you be surprised? No, no, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Would not be surprised at all. Wouldn't be surprised at 16. Would be if they still there at 19, I'd be kind of surprised, but not blown away. <laughs> I just be like the Saints, man. Like <laughs> these dudes, but man, like the quarterback, where the quarterbacks get drafted, man. Like, I, right, man, it it is really fascinating because we nobody knows. Nobody, bro. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I like, got I, I the the biggest the biggest pressure point in this draft is that pick at six. Mm-hmm. That, That's that. That's going to mean so much. That's the pressure point in the draft. Because if – and I think the question you have to ask is, like, how much power does Matt Rule have in that building right now? Yeah. I doubt it's a lot. I don't know it's a lot, bro. And if you have the GM, you know, if the GM has more power and the GM is, like, insisting that, no, like, yeah, we need a quarterback, but – we're not super, super, you know, strong about him, and we want to go off at the top because that's the better player. That that could change everything. But all it all it takes is David Tepper. If he has fallen if if he has fallen in love with the quarterback, and he's the yeah. owner. He's and he's invested all this money to buy the Panthers. And man, I was just thinking about it today of like just all the trades the Panthers have made. Like that Sam Donald trade was fucking terrible, and they immediately picked up his fifth year option after they traded for him. Dumb oh. that that CJ Henderson trade, terrible. terrible. That's that's a Gilmore trade, bro. Terrible. But <laughs> they have done terribly. And so I can see David Pe- Tepper saying, you know what? I need our fans need some good news. I love Malik Willis. I love Kenny Pickett. They're gonna be the fucking face of my franchise. We're drafting them at six. Don't care what any of y'all say. But that, to me, is pick six is going to tell so much about what's going to happen the rest of the draft. Yep. Yep, that's the domino, man. It is. It really and, is. You know, you know, Seattle, we'll see. Um, I, I just get the sense that I just before. don't see them. I don't, man. I, no. I see them going. They'll probably get Baker before the draft, or during the draft or something. But I mean, they took Russell Wilson, what, the third round? Third round. You know, and that was with Matt Flynn on the team. You know what I'm saying? Like, Pete just Pete, uh, I mean, uh, Pete just seems like a guy that's just like, eh, you know, <laughs> hell with a quarterback. We're gonna run the ball because it's good defense. Yes, you know, <laughs> I think he's worried about his defense. Yeah, if <laughs> would it be some dumb shit? They just they could <laughs> they could have just fucking drafted Kyle Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> They really could have, man. Um, but it this 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 whole thing about what's gonna happen is crucial. It's 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 crucial. I don't think I can understate that enough. I did want to do a quick since we did a drop, we did a draft simulator, you know, when the Saints had their 18th pick. I just want to do a quick two-round mock draft simulator, real quick. With pick 16 and 19, um, to see what happens, just just for curiosity's sake, got it going. The 
Jags go chalk. They go Aiden Hutchinson. The Lions go with Kayvon Thibodeau, which the NFL is just going to overthink him, man. Like, it's it's mind-boggling to me. Like, he, like he's so good, and he, he's going to not go as high as he should go. But anyway, um, the Texans go Trayvon Walker. The Jets, with the surprise of the draft, they went Kyle Hamilton. The Seahawks just went Malik Willis. The Commanders just went Jamison Williams. Um, the Vikings went Jordan Davis. The Lions, did they trade from 32 to 13? I think the Lions traded from 32 to 13 to draft Garrett Wilson for whatever reason. Sure. Um, so, and then the pick before us, the Eagles drafted Matt Correa. Interesting. So we're at, we have pick 16. Now, there's some interesting names on the board at 16. We have Jermaine Johnson, who's probably, I know this is a, a, a simulator. He's probably going like top five, top six of the draft. He's the edge rusher from Florida State. Have not watched much of him, but he's there at 16 for us. We also have Trevor Penning, offensive tackle from Northern Iowa. That's on the board. And we also have Kenny Pickett, quarterback, Pittsburgh on the board, as well as Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. So we're we're again, we have we're co-GMs. What are you thinking at pick 16 with these players on the board? Man. You know, I I just this is what we think the Saints would do. This is what if if we were running the what, Saints, what the Saints, what the Saints would do. If the Saints were, if this was the Saints would do, Jermaine Johnson would be a Saint. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, like I don't think it's even a debate. Like if he, if he's there, like, come on, man. Don't think it's a debate, bro. Don't think it's a debate at all. They'd be trying to trade Marcus Davenport that day. <laughs> Yeah, to like recoup like a second round pick or something for sure. Yeah, yeah, like they were oh. trying to get him out of there that day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's easy for me. I don't know much about him, but I, I don't know what is. You know, I don't know if it's his exact measurables or whatever, but that would be easy for me. Like that's what the Saints would do. Me, I'd probably go pinning. Interesting. I'd go first. Just, just to lock it up, man. Like. Big offensive line, believe it, bro. I go ahead, get pinning up. I like him. Lock that. He can play right or left. Let's go. Okay, so so you're you're on the clock. Give give me what what are we doing? What do you mean? Well, for which pick? The 16. Wait, which one? Uh let's go Jermaine, man. All right. Jermaine Johnson locking it up. At 19, at 19, we have still on the board Trevor Penning, Kenny Pickett, Chris Olave. The commanders, now, so the Saints would never do this trade, but I think they should. The commanders are basically off wanting to get pick 19. They give us our se- their second round pick at pick 47 and their next year's first round pick. Ooh, I'll take that. <laughs> the the possibility of having the commander's first round pick next year, bro. Give me that. <laughs> Just give me a top five. Let's go, let's go to the top five, man. Give me that shit now. We we gonna accept it, bro. We're gonna we gonna trade down. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> they took Kenny Pickett. <laughs> the Steelers okay. draft the Steelers drafted Chris Olave. Of course, of course, of course they would. So we got basically pick forty-seven and pick forty-nine. So two second-round picks. All offense from here, baby. Don't have no quarterback. Let's see. So we have we're up at pick forty-seven. Jahan Dotson is on the board. Mm. Wide receiver, Penn State. Also, let's see who else is on the board. Wide receiver rise. 
George Pickens is on the board as well. Mm, that's my dude. Give me. Right. I'm going to go George Pickens, wide receiver Georgia. All right. All right. Already back on the clock. Pick 49. Pick 49. We've got some tight ends on the board. We got Trey, uh, Trey McBride on the board. Um, Desmond Riddler is on the board. Ooh. Oh, can't do it, bro. <laughs> can't Any running backs? Uh, Kenneth Walker, the running back hey. from Michigan State, is on the board. Give me. That's it, bro. We so in this mock draft, <laughs> we this would be a very Saints draft, bro. <laughs> it would be, man. But I'll be, I'd, I'd be okay with it. So in this draft, J- Jermaine Johnson, who again is probably going to go top six, that at, 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 at most top eight in this upcoming draft. Ed Rusher from Florida State. It's just going to happen. He's going to get drafted top eight. He, ha- he happened to fall to 16. And if you know this team, if you if there's a player that falls, especially oh, like an edge rusher, oh, or, yeah. an athletic freak of an edge rusher, <laughs> he, he'll be a saint. And then at oh. pick 19, because of the – Washington Commanders offering us next year's first. I, I I don't like next year's quarterback draft class, but to get your – the Commanders are not a good team. They're just not – and they got Carson Wentz too. Oh, boy, that's going to be a like, – so we're betting in, in this mock draft, we're essentially betting on Washington's M, – uh, being an inept organization that will net the Saints a top five, top six draft pick. In Bro, you you you'll be picking ahead of the Eagles. <laughs> Bro, with the pick they got next year from us. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Isn't that wild? <laughs> so in in this draft, we got an edge rusher that we didn't expect to be there. We did get a wide receiver, George Pickens from Georgia. We got the the however you want to grade them the top best running back or second best running back in the draft of Kenneth Walker, the third from Michigan state. Um, it, it does some things. It, it addresses the need in wide receiver it addresses need running back, but also thank you. And if in hypothetically, if the draft played out like this with Jermaine Johnson falling, I think you made the great point is that you're calling up as soon as he is drafted. You are calling up teams saying, "Hey, uh, top Marcus Davenport, uh, what would you give me for him?" Like, <laughs> I mean, he's you know some of the last years of his deal. You get that money off your books, <laughs> and then that potentially could free you up to sign like Teron Matthew and just kind of go from yeah. Like, like it, it, it opens a lot of possibilities. Um, but that's the thing about. The draft, like it makes it exciting because all it takes is a player slipping. It's all it takes, man. It's just a player just that doesn't go where, you know, the consensus thinks that he should go. And it just throws everything in, in whack. I will say one thing. I will be very shocked. I will be very shocked if the, if the Saints did not draft a wide receiver with one of their first two rounds. Uh, Me too. I, I, that was shocking. That would shock me more if they didn't draft. Like, if a quarterback fell to them and they didn't – like, them not drafting a wide receiver would completely shock me. Well, we know they're not going to trade down, so. No, 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 no. (laughs) Still that out the window. Um, I've I've watched, you know, pretty much all – as many players as I'm going to watch, I I think I'm pretty much watched out. I might watch – might watch some Daxton Hill just, you know, cause I can see him. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know him as a player, but obviously I know that safety is a, is a need for the saints. And if he's there, I could, you know, maybe see him drafting him. So I might watch a little of him, but. But I, w- I will say as, as, as far as safety, you know, it's funny. It used to be a joke, like, you know, can he play safety? Can he play safety? 
Yeah, it's been dope, but like, bro, this, this team has been good at finding safeties, man. Like last well, couple of years. I mean, let's let's talk. One of the things, you know, we we talked a little bit about the Jeff Ireland experience in terms of, you know, just his his drafting trend since he he's been helping with the draft room. Is he has especially since he's left Miami, he has developed a knack for drafting damn good secondary players. Yeah. It is it is his thing. It is his Lattimore, Paul Snadivo, C.D. Deuce, Marcus Williams, Von Bell. Like, he has an eye. And obviously, it's not just him, right? It's, it's also the scouting, whatever. But he has an affinity for drafting a damn, like good secondary players. Um, and it's, it's going to be needed in this draft. Like, you know, there's still some holes in the secondary in terms of, like, Marcus Williams being gone. I know they brought in Marcus May, but are you just going to really roll out Marcus May and P.J. Williams and hope, like, that's going to be enough? Like, uh, I, I, I don't know. But I do think they will draft some more secondary players in this draft. Plus, you have, Matt, you know, Malcolm Jenkins retiring. So it's a, it's, it's a low-key need. That and, they're not, and they're not scared to start secondary players in their first year. No, seen not it, at all. Seen it with Adebo, seen it with Marcus Williams, seen it with uh, Cedar Deuce, to Avon Bell, like Kenny, Kenny Picaro. Like, they've done it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, yes. like they're not scared to take a third-round safety and start him if he's showing, at if all. He's showing up the cap. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so like, you know, that's definitely – if they do – I think they're going to go mostly offense, but if they do go defense – you know, I think it'll definitely be a safety or a cornerback. I, I'll ask you this because I I've watched enough of him, um, and I know how I feel about him. And it's interesting hearing Greg Cosell talk about him. But, but what do you, what do you think of Jordan Davis? Uh, you no, know, I've heard Cosell talk about him. I didn't watch a ton of them, but what I did watch. I, I do think he probably has more pass rush than he's shown, but I think he's going to be a good player, man. But I just I I can't I can't see him going early because like when you go early, bro, you got to affect you got to affect the passing, man. Got you got to affect the passing, and he's a clog, bro. Like I think he's going to be a good defensive player, man, but. All that athletic shit, like who was that? Who was that D that DT that ran like a crazy four, four six or four seven years ago? Can't remember his name. Big dude, can't remember his name. But he's something like that, man. Like, yeah, he's an athlete, but man, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was about to say Walter Thomas. <laughs> no, not Walter. But at the end of the day, I think that's gonna be him. He's gonna be a good defensive player, but man, listen. Uh, hard pass in the first round at least. Yeah, I, I agree. Because I, I just don't think he he doesn't bring you the he doesn't bring you the positional value that you want in a first rounder. That's just like when Greg when Greg told me that like but told everybody that like he rarely played third down on passing downs. Told me everything I needed to know, bro. I was just like, what? Like the the, the coaches at Georgia are telling you. Yes. Te- what, what do we always say, bro? Teams will will tell you what what they think of players. Right. Well, thanks. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. Um, even though he blew up the combine uh, and everything, and it just it just it's gonna be a no for me. Um, anyway, we wanted to get this podcast out there, talk about talk about the draft and everything, and it's just it's 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 soon, man. It's soon. We don't, you know, maybe there might be some more news that kind of comes out between then. I wouldn't be surprised if um, Baker Mayfield's situation gets gets resolved prior prior to the draft. But we're almost there, and it's it's, it's a little scary, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's, a, it's a little scary, but it's also fun. And at the end of the day, we go, we gonna be drunk and and having ourselves a good time regardless. So enjoy these next couple of weeks. Uh, if you're 
a Saints fan and a Pels fan for sure enjoy this. I'm very, very excited for Pelican fans tonight. I'm uh, good to see them, you know, get to have a good time and hopefully that can continue um, on Friday when they play the Clippers. But we will be back next week. We will be talking more about the draft, if anything happens. I do have something hopefully in store next week. Really talk about like like the numbers and the draft profiles that have caught the Saints eye and that they drafted over the years. So hopefully that project will be done this weekend so we can talk about it next week. But until then, we're going to get out of here. We're out. Peace. This is the story of The One. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Bakers, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Bakers worth it every time. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.